Hi guys, <laughs> it's me, it's Monday. It's seven o'clock on the Eastern half of the United States. I have not eaten dinner yet. I have been waiting all day for this fun video project that we've got going on. I've been checking out the Prime Day sales at Jesse James Speeds all day long, checking the website. I just hit refresh on the website right at seven o'clock on the dot to see it actually turn over from the last sale to the new sale. It's really exciting. Um, there's actually a person sitting there like making sure that that happens. That's pretty awesome. Um, you guys, you take that stuff, that kind of stuff for granted. There's really somebody there to push that button. That was pretty cool. So it was right on the money. So like I said, it's Monday, lots of sales, lots of good stuff going on today. Um, doesn't really feel like a Monday. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, everybody else. How is everybody doing? Good, good. Has everybody been keeping up with the sales today? If you haven't, you are missing out because there's been some really good stuff on the Jesse James. I keep looking because I'm like watching the computer as everything kind of ticks by. Um, it is now in the seven o'clock hour. So there is a brand new sale going on on the Jesse James Speeds website. That is buy two, get one free on Dakota Stones and on Cord. That's a pretty awesome deal if you ask me. So if you bought beads earlier, now's your chance to pick up some more beads, some Dakota Stones beads, and to grab some cord to go with all of your beads for all of your beady needs. And yeah, let's make some jewelry. What a great way to start the week out, right? This is kind of a surprise project because um, I'm normally here on Thursdays, but you guys are getting me here on a Monday night. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm really hyped up. I've been eating tons of M&Ms, so I am fueled up on candy and I'm ready to go. <laughs> So today's project is a fun one. You guys saw a little sneak peek of it on Facebook. Um, I'm using the Dakota Stones Rocky Road Tiger's Eye mix. This one is beautiful. All of the Dakota Stones mixes are beautiful, but I really love this one and I don't use a lot of browns. Um, just, I do in my personal designs, but as far as projects are concerned, we usually use a lot of bright colors. So this is kind of a new one for me. Hey everybody, everybody is joining us. Wow, lots of people ready for some fun jewelry making before they head into their Tuesday. And not only am I using the Dakota Stones, but I'm also using from hot Arizona, Susie. I heard that this morning at seven o'clock, it was already 80 degrees in Tucson. So that's, that's some hot stuff. I'm using some of this leather cord. This is a half a millimeter round. So this is some tiny leather cord that is perfect for all of these beads. It will fit, which is the most important thing. I mean, really, you buy your cord and then you buy your beads and then you realize that they don't fit. I can guarantee you that these two in particular will definitely go together. So I will show you these up close here in just a second. Um, something that you should know that we are using for this project is the tying station. We've done this before. I know there's a bit of a glare here. Let me turn this off for just a second. So we're using the tying station for today's project. Hi, Dakota Stones. You are in the right place. <laughs> anyway, we're using the, um, the tying station, which you can get on the Jesse James Speeds website site. This is a beetle on product. This is a super cool one. It's really easy to use. You can use this for all kinds of projects. I grab for this all the time, but it's really good for knotting. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take some of this leather cord and knot it up and make a really pretty necklace. And then you can take the same technique that we do tonight and you can turn it into a bracelet. You can turn it into an anklet. You guys know, I always try to give you something that you can use in a lot of different ways. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. Um, just one more reminder, just in case you missed it, stay here for the project, but when we're done, from 7 until 11 p.m., you can get buy one, get one free, or I'm sorry, buy two, get one free Dakota Stones and cord. That's any kind of cord that's on the Jesse James website, so definitely take advantage of that. Cord is one of those things that you have to have. I mean, you can't make any jewelry without anything to string it on, right? So... All right, so this project takes minimal materials. Let's get to it, I'm excited, you guys. I'm gonna turn my light back on and then I'll flip you guys around. All right. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these, these stones because they are really, really beautiful. I love this mix so much. So this is the Rocky Road Tiger's Eye and it's in that three-tiered mix. 
you guys know that Jesse James Speeds has been doing recently, which I absolutely love. It really shows off everything in the package. I don't know when it was in that one big bag, you kind of had to like move it around, but you get a, a clear view of everything that is included. And I love that. So all the Dakota stones are on the top and then you've got some more glass beads and some just really, really pretty things underneath here. And then at the bottom, you've got your metal beads. You've got some metal spacers and some tassels. We're gonna use a little bit of everything here. We're not gonna use any of the tassels in this project. At least I'm not, but you may decide when you make this that it needs a tassel, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and dump this out because let's go ahead and sort our beads out first. Like I said, these are all the Dakota stones. It has this like matte finish tiger's eye, which is something that I have really not seen whole a lot of. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love a matte finish on a bead, that's just me. So there are several of those. And then this little guy, he's like a star cut little tiger's eye, just really, really cool. So we're gonna use all of these. I'm gonna sit these to the side, pour out the next little bit here. Show you guys this big focal bead. There's two of these, so you can make earrings. We're gonna use one of these to make kind of the center focal portion of our necklace. I love these, I think they're really super cool. They have that awesome swirl in them that has a little bit of orange, a little bit of tan, and there's like a hint of light baby blue in there. So if you were to mix this with some blue, definitely bring that color out for sure. So there's a lot of different finishes here. There's some metallic, there is some of that flat, again, that kind of matte finish on these guys. Lots of shapes, lots of texture, really, really pretty stuff. So. Let's see, what are we gonna use? What are we gonna use? We're gonna pull out one of these for sure. And two of these metallic guys, those two. And then we need to move on to the next package here. So I'm gonna set this to the side for just a second. Okay, so this guy, the one on the bottom, has all of the tassels. Got these super cute little gray tassels and then you have the mini black tassels so everything goes together and then of course you've got like we said the metal beads and we're going to use one of these as a drop for our center portion of our necklace and like i said if you wanted to use a tassel instead of this drop you totally could okay um you can do whatever you want to do with this project I'm gonna use a couple of these guys. Let's see, sit those to the side too. Probably have to go back because I'll forget which ones we're using. Okay, now let's talk about cord before we get going too. I want you guys to see this cord up close before we start our project because it's really, really pretty. If you want this exact cord, this is Kanza number 52. If you'll just type in Kanza in the um, search box over there on the Jesse James Speeds website, this one will come up. This stuff is awesome. I very rarely see such a small leather this is a half a millimeter look at that little tininess and it's oh, it feels so soft this is from leather cord usa if you've never used leather cord usa leather before what are you waiting for what are you doing with your life <laughs> they have the best leather cord it's always so soft it's really really good stuff and like i said this half a millimeter this stuff's gonna fit through all of your beads. You're not gonna have any problems at all. Even these little tiny guys, it's a little bit of a squeeze and we may have to work, you know, to get them. Well, no, that one went just fine. Some of them were a little bit tight, but for the most part, every single, every single bead in this Dakota Stones mix will fit on this half millimeter cord. So that's super exciting. All right, sitting this to the side, let's get started with our focal piece, okay? So this is just gonna be some easy wire wrapping. There's not anything hard to this. The main portion of this project is gonna be the leather and the knots that we do. So we're gonna kind of speed through this part, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take an eye pin. I'm not even gonna worry about making my own. I'm just gonna use one that I have. I'm gonna thread on one of these metallic beads, okay? This is like a, looks like maybe a four or five millimeter bead. He's a little bit bigger than a four. And then we're gonna thread on one of the metal spacers, okay? So there's that. And let's put this guy on. And then we're just gonna repeat that. So we're gonna put a spacer and one of these metal beads. All right, now at this point, 
you can decide whether or not you want to do a wrapped loop or just a regular loop. But what you want is you want the loop on the bottom to go one direction and the loop on the top to go the other direction so that when we thread this onto our necklace, it hangs the right direction and this bottom part hangs the right direction as well. Okay, so let's just make it easy. Let's just do a regular closed loop. We won't do any wrapping, okay, because I've got a lot of knotting going on and we really want to focus on that. So all I did was just bend that wire 90 degrees. I'm going to come in, trim that off. I'm leaving myself. That's a little bit less than a half of an inch, whatever you're comfortable with, okay? And then you're going to take your round nose pliers and roll back and make a loop. And I do want to make this loop a little bit bigger than my normal loops. You guys know if you've watched me before, I make really tiny loops. So I want this guy to be a little bit bigger because we are going to thread him onto that cord. All right, so there's my loop for the top. Okay, so we got a loop on the top, loop on the bottom. They're going opposite directions. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of these guys and thread it on to a head pin. So we're not using an eye pin for it. All right, same thing. We're just going to make a simple loop on this guy so we can get on over to the meat and potatoes, if you will, of our design. Okay, we just want to get this part out of the way because we want to be able to just thread this on when we're ready. Okay, so just regular loop here at the top. Nothing fancy. Okay, I am going to go ahead and attach this guy to this one. So this center portion is going to be ready to go. This is going to be the center point of our necklace. And like I said, if you want to use a tassel here, you absolutely could. The tassels look really cool with it. So it's really kind of up to you. I just love that metal bead. So that's what we're going to go with. Okay, so now we're going to get our tying station ready. If you've never used the tying station before, this is a really handy little tool. It's all made out of acrylic, very sturdy. It's got a ruler on the side for you so that you can measure as you go. Luckily for this project, we don't have to do any measuring. I'm doing all the measuring for you, so you don't have to even do that part, okay? So it comes with screws on either end and a washer and then an acrylic plate. And this is how you're gonna attach your work to the tying station so that you can pull everything tight, you can tighten everything down, and you have both hands free. Now imagine back in the day when you made friendship bracelets at summer camp, safety pinning was the way to go. You would safety pin it to your buddy's arm <laughs> on their shirt, of course, not to their arm, you know what I mean. Or you would safety pin it to your sock or whatever you could find to safety pin what you were working on to you. This takes that away. This is kind of the adult version of that. No more safety pins are needed. You can attach everything to this and it will be nice and secure. Okay, so let me show you what we're gonna do. I don't have a real measurement for this because we're just gonna work right off of the round here. Okay, so we're gonna start with the whole bit of leather and that's, that's fine. You're still gonna have plenty left over. So don't think that I'm like gonna use up all of this because I promise I'm not. And if you're curious, there are two meters here. We're definitely not gonna use the full two meters of this. All right, what I am gonna do is I am gonna find the center of this cord and I've already got some knots in mind where I was rolling it up yesterday. I don't have an exact measurement because I didn't cut any of this yesterday when I was making the design because I wanted to be able to show you like the full package. So if you need an exact measurement, I'll be able to give it to you after the project is over. I'll also have an official like photograph of this. I didn't even photograph it either because I was trying to keep everything ready to go. Okay, so find the middle of your cord. Give me just a second because two meters is quite a bit. All right, I'm going to find the middle. And just like with a lot old school macrame, I remember looping it to my toe. Me too. I did that all the time. And if I didn't loop it to my toe, I would seriously safety pin it to the person next to me, which not a lot of people <laughs> appreciated. Okay, so we're gonna take it in the middle and we're just gonna tie an overhanded knot. Okay, you want this loop to be big enough to go over the peg 
on your tying station, but it doesn't have to be a huge loop, okay? So I went ahead and looped that over there and I'm gonna pull that down. Now that's ready to go, okay? Like I said, that's not a huge loop. We don't want it to be a huge loop. We're not gonna take it out, so this loop is gonna be part of your design, okay? Now I'm gonna take the acrylic plate that goes on top, I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna put the washer down before I put the wing nut on. Now, it is really important that you add the washer. Do not just screw your wing nut on against the acrylic because if you tighten it down too tight, you'll crack the acrylic. So you gotta be careful. But of course, Beetle On took care of that for you by adding the washer, okay? Because they know crazy people like me will screw that down so tight. <laughs> And you really don't have to screw it down super tight because it's already nice and secure. Okay, so what you're working with is two strands. Now, you're gonna decide which strand is the left and which one's gonna be the right or not necessarily left or right because that's always in the same place. But what's gonna be your dominant hand and your non-dominant hand? You want your dominant side to be the working side, okay? So we don't want any beads on it. We're gonna sit it to the side. I'm just gonna kind of pull it up and over here. We're worried about this strand in the middle. Hi, Karen. Hi, Kathy. All right, so our, our <laughs> non-dominant strand that's over here on my left, because that's my non-dominant, we're gonna start threading on some beads, and we're gonna go ahead and thread on half of the beads for the necklace. So you need to go ahead and decide whatever pattern it is that you want, okay? I'm gonna thread mine on in the following order, okay? I'm gonna thread on this big metallic check glass guy okay so I'm gonna thread him on and then underneath him I'm gonna thread on one of these star cut tiger's eye beads okay the next thing I'm gonna thread on is one of these little chocolate guys and I really he's just a it's like a little Chinese crystal and it's really really pretty kind of chocolatey color Okay, I'm gonna thread him on. And then we're gonna thread on some of these rounds and I'm gonna kind of alternate them so that I have the same amount on both, or I have enough for both sides and everything's kind of even. We're gonna go up in size a little bit. So this guy, one of these tiger's eye beads, one of these guys, another one of the tiger's eye. There's four of these matte tiger's eye, these large ones, so there's enough for two on each side of your necklace from your center. And one of these. And let's see, another one of these little small guys. And then the center bead is gonna be one of these, okay? All right, so now we're not gonna worry about threading anything else on right this second. We could go ahead and thread on the entire necklace. However, we're gonna have to move everything up. Eventually, it's gonna be longer than the space that we have here, and I'll show you what I mean when we get there, okay? So just go ahead and thread these on. And then down here at the bottom, you have the exact same thing that you've got up at the top. You've got your wing nut and your acrylic plate. I'm not gonna take this completely off, but I am gonna raise this up just enough so that I can slip this piece of leather between those acrylic plates, okay? Pull everything down and then screw the wing nut down. So now, I don't have to hold on to any of my beads. They're right where I want them to be. I can pull them up when I'm ready to use them. Okay, so let's talk about knots. Now, we did a knotting project for Father's Day, and we used this knot. So this is just gonna be a refresher for some of you, but some of you who are not familiar with knotting, this is gonna be a new one, but it's fairly easy. I'll try to walk through it as slow as I can so that you'll understand it, okay? So we've, we're gonna slide that bead. This is the first bead in our design. We're gonna slide that guy all the way up. Now, we are working with the thread over here. Let me move my tools out of the way because the leather will get caught in everything. Okay, so we're going to take the right-handed st strand and we're going to take it and we're going to go across the top of this center piece of leather, okay? Going across the top. Now what we want to do is we want to take the bottom 
or not necessarily the bottom, but we need to take the rest of our thread and we want to come up through the loop that we've made here. And I'll do this a couple of times. So in case you miss it or you don't understand it the first time, that's okay. Just hold on tight. Okay. <laughs> just, just wait for it. It'll come again. And then you're going to pull that up. So basically what you've created is a half hitch knot. Okay. What we're creating is a lark's head knot with one strand. So you'll see it, you'll recognize that lark's head after we do the second step of the knot, okay? So this knot happens in two steps, just like a square knot. All right, so we're taking this thread again. This time, we're gonna go underneath the center thread, making that P shape, okay? And so now all of the working thread is over here on the other side. And this time, instead of going up through, we're gonna go down through. So we're gonna take our cord and go down through the loop of the P. Okay, and then you're just gonna pull. So this is what you've got, another half hitch knot. It's just going in a different direction. And when you pull that up, then you're gonna recognize that lark's head knot. I'll try to hold it up here so you can see it, if I can get it to focus. See that lark's head knot? That's a very, very common knot. A lot of people don't realize you can do that with one strand. And that's exactly what we've done. Because normally, you make a loop and you loop it through. Same thing. Okay? All right. So, we're just going to continue on with this kind of knot. But we're going to add some spacing in between here, too. So, we're going to change it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and pull another bead up. Okay? Same thing. We're going across the top of that center cord, and, it, and it's going across the top. Just double check, make sure you're going across the top, okay? Now we're going to go underneath and up through the loop, okay? Pull everything, and when you pull it up, there's what you got, okay? You want your cord to run along the side of that bead. So you've got a cord going through the center of the bead and then a cord going over here, just acting as a decorative part. It's going across the side of the bead, okay? So now second step to this knot, this time we're going underneath to create a P and we're gonna take the tail and go down through. Okay, and then you're gonna pull, pull everything up and you've got your knot. Okay, and now your beads are nice and secure. Okay, so we are gonna continue on going that way. That's how we're gonna attach all of the beads, but you can also add spacing here with this kind of knot as well. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a space that's about one inches without any beads at all. It's just gonna be this nice double strand of this pretty metallic cord, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down just a little bit, kinda eyeball it. You don't have to measure, you don't have to be exact, okay? And we're gonna do the same process as if there were a bead on our cord. So we're gonna make that P going across the top and now we're coming up through the center, okay? And now I'm gonna pull. Now you'll notice there's a big space here. If I pulled up on the cord, it's gonna shorten up this space. We don't want our knot to go all the way up next to that last knot, okay? We wanna leave ourselves some space. Give about an inch with nothing there. So I'm gonna hold my finger behind there because I don't want this to slip, okay? We're going to repeat, or not repeat rather, but we're going to do the second half of our knot. So we're going to make our P, and you just have to work carefully while you're holding that underneath. Go up underneath, just like we did before, and go ahead and pull. So now, there's your Lark's Head Knot, but you've got some space here, which is pretty cool. That means that you can space out all your beads if you wanted to. You could add any kind of spacing here that you wanted. And you know what? I think I did that upside down. I'm going to undo this one more time and we'll go through it again. It's all right. Not that big of a deal. I was not really paying attention and I did it backwards. Just goes to show. <laughs> Do not talk and not at the same time. All right. So in case you missed it, you're going across the top to make your P, okay? Then we're going to come up through, pull, and decide how much space, okay? 
Hold that there with your finger so you don't lose your space. Okay. Now we're going behind. Okay. And then down through. And give it a pull. There we go. Now my knot's going in the right direction. <laughs> okay. Now, this will stay if you pull it nice and tight. However, I personally, before I did anything else with this, I would add some glue. And I probably wouldn't add the glue to the top. I would add it to the back. So that's what we're going to do because we don't want this to come undone. We don't want it to move too much. I can't get my glue open. Oh no. Okay, so we're going to skip the glue part. But if I if if I were doing this piece of jewelry to give to somebody or to sell, I would flip this over on the back and I would add a dab of hypo cement right here on the back side of this knot. That's just going to ensure that this knot is not going to slip up and down in this space. Once you get some beads going here, you really don't have to worry about that too much, but you never know. I just like to use the hypo cement as some extra insurance, okay? So now we're ready to add another bead, so we're just going to slide the next bead up, and we're just going to repeat the process. We're going across the top, and then up through the loop, pulling that tight, okay? Same thing, but we're going underneath this time, and then down through. Okay, so now you're pretty guaranteed that that's not going to move too much. And if you really pulled on it, you could shorten that up and you might make, you know, one side pull it out and just make it look funny. So add that glue just as your extra insurance. All right, so we're going to continue this process until we have all of the beads that we have thread on nice and secure. So I'm just going to kind of speed this up a little bit. Let me know. If you need me to stop is the hypo cement quick dry the hypo cement will fully set up in 24 hours um, so you can you know let this necklace sit overnight but in about 15 minutes you're pretty good to go okay so that means like you know give it some glue and then go ahead and work down here because you're not really gonna be touching it and it's it, it, it will still be a little tacky but for the most part it's not gonna stick to anything else okay that's why I use hypo cement so much is because after just a few minutes, you can pretty much continue on with your work and not have to worry about it too much. All right, same thing. So we've pulled up one of these pretty tiger's eye beads, going across the top, up through the bottom. Okay. And then same thing, but going underneath this time. And we're going down through the loop. And pull. Okay. So you've got these pretty knots, these pretty spaces in between here. It's really showing off that metallic cord that's so pretty. Another bead, same thing. Now this time I'm, I'm, I am going to speed up because I know it's Monday night and <laughs> some of you may not have had dinner yet. I have not had dinner yet. Like I said, I've been eating, <laughs> I've been eating M&Ms all day. So <laughs> I do need real food at some point. All right. Now, you can use any bead you want to with this. I just loved this combination of the Tiger's Eye Dakota Stones and this metallic cord. It was like they were meant to be. They really look beautiful together. All right, couple more beads, and then we're ready to work on the center. Okay, I'm going to slide this up for you guys. Once you get the knot down, you can work it up pretty quickly. It's really just repetitive. Okay. All right, so now we've made it to our center bead. This guy marks the very center of our necklace. This is where our focal point is gonna hang, okay? But the focal point is actually gonna hang on our working cord instead of this middle cord. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple of more beads. Let's take, let's see here. I've got two more of these guys, these little metallic guys. I love them because they're flat on both sides. That's pretty cool. 
And then let's take two more of these little chocolate crystal beads, those guys. Okay, so we're gonna thread, now this is, like I said, this is the working cord. This is not the cord here in the middle. So we're gonna thread on one of these. And we're gonna thread on one of these. Okay, now we wanna bring in the dangle that we created. Okay, and we're gonna thread him on. And then we're just gonna repeat. We're gonna put that crystal on there and then this metallic bead on here. Oh, maybe. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, oh gosh, I'm sorry, you guys. All right, so I'm gonna pull those down. I'll show you guys what we've got here. Now my cord has come a little bit loose. Let me tighten everything up. Okay, so this is our working cord where we thread our beads and our focal point, and then we have this center bead here. So what we want is we want this stuff to hang underneath this center bead. And because of how these knots are made, we're gonna utilize this piece of cord that runs across the side of the bead. That's actually what this is gonna be. It's just gonna be, instead of laying up against the top of the bead, or the side of the bead rather, it's gonna have some open space here just like the open space that we made at the top. Okay, so definitely utilizing a bunch of different ways to create the same knot. You can take the same knot and do so many different things with it. Okay, so we're gonna go across the top of the leather, just like before, and then up through, and then we're gonna pull. And now we need to decide how much of a dangle that we want, like how much space do we want here before we cinch up the second knot. So you can pull on this a little bit, make it hang down as long as you want, or you can shorten it up, okay? But just hold on to it, push that knot right up against that bead, and then you wanna go ahead and finish the second step, step of your knot going underneath and down through, and then when you pull, you have secured your little focal point. Okay, so that's gonna hang in the very center of your necklace. And like I said, you can, it's just a knot, but if you add beads to this, so think about if you're making a bracelet, same thing, okay? If you're making a bracelet and you're making these half hitch knots, you can add beads and pull it tight. So instead of having just cord here, you could have little seed beads here or smaller beads here to go along the edge. So a lot of different ways you can use this technique, okay? All right, so we're ready to go on and thread on the rest of our beads, but we're gonna start running out of space because we've only got a couple of inches left here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off and we're gonna go ahead and thread on the rest of our beads. Let's do that quickly, okay? And you're threading on just in the opposite order than what we had before. Okay, so I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to show you how we attach this back to the tying station so that we can continue to be attached, because that's important. <laughs> All right, so I'm just threading on my pattern. Okay, another one of these. And... One of these. I love this cord so much because even the smallest beads fit on it. How awesome is that? I, tr I just, I can't get over how cool that is. I've never had leather this small. It's just, it's pretty awesome. So it's pretty excited about it. Okay, last bead. All right, so we have all of that thread on. Okay. Now we're going to come up here to the top of the tying station and we're going to take everything off. I'm gonna take the wing nut. Love this, we'll watch again. Yay, thank you, Diana. I'm glad you guys are liking this project. I, I love knotting, that's one of my favorite techniques. Okay, so we're gonna move this all up. Now, it's still gonna be kind of a tight squeeze. Don't know where, hold on, let me grab something real quick. I left out an important part of the tying station. Okay, so the tying station, 
The size of the leather is 0.5 millimeters, so it's teeny tiny. The tying station also comes with this guy, okay? And you're like, what? When you first get the tying station, you're like, what is this? So you've got this mushy foam on one side and the acrylic plate on the other side. This is what this is used for, okay? So when you're working and your work is longer than your tying station and you need to move down, you're gonna move your beads up here, okay? Onto the acrylic plate, but you don't want them to get messed up. You don't wanna scratch your beads or whatever you're working on. So you're gonna put this down on top, okay? Now you're gonna take your, I may have to move it there just a little bit. Now you can go ahead and push that down and you've got room for your washer and your wing nut. And actually I might have to move it, put it on a smaller bead. But the foam is going to keep you from destroying or hurting your beads or your wire or whatever it is that you're using, okay? That foam is really important, okay? So now everything is secure and it's up against a layer of foam, so I don't have to worry that anything is happening to it, okay? And the rest of my work is going out the back and now I have plenty of space to work with. So we're just going to tighten everything up on the bottom again. I'm just going to slide this piece underneath here. I know, Kathy, right? The tying station is awesome. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's one of my favorite tools. All right, so now we're ready to knot some more. So we're just going to keep on going like we were going before. We're going to take a knot and move it up. And now we're going to continue with our knotting. We're going across the top to make a P shape and up through that loop okay and we're gonna pull and then we're gonna go underneath okay and then down through and pull okay and then we're just gonna keep going I've got just a few beads here we'll get the rest of them on and don't forget that after we get a few of these beads we're ready for the last two beads, we're gonna create that space again, okay? So underneath, you guys tell me if you want me to slow down because I'm trying to, to kind of move along here. If you wanna see the knot real slow. How long is the finished piece? The finished piece for this is gonna be about an 18 inch necklace. I'm gonna show you that, that full length is not this. We're actually gonna add some chain to this at the end just to give it length. So it's really adjustable. You can make it whatever length you want it to be. The center portion is definitely not 18 inches. I'll show you. And just when we get through, I'll show you how much extra you've got to work with. Okay. So there's that guy moving right along. Okay. And you guys, if you like knotting projects, let me know because I love knotting. When I very first started making jewelry a million years ago, <laughs> I started with macrame. And so I know all kinds of knots. If you guys like knots, I, I'm your girl for sure. All right. And then under. And you can see once you get a rhythm going, you can really kind of speed up. And before you know it, you've got a whole strand ready to go. Okay, there's that one. We've got one more bead to add, and then we're going to add some more space. Last tiny little bead for this section, okay? And just a refresher, we're going across the top, okay? And coming up through the loop, and we're going to pull, okay? Now this time we're going underneath, okay, and down through, and then you pull, okay. Now we've gotten to the section where we have these last two beads and we're going to again create an inch of space here with no beads. So we're going to go ahead and, and start our knot just like we would if we had beads, okay. So I've pulled that up and then I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. You can measure with a ruler if you want to. Okay, holding that with my finger, going underneath. Okay, and then down through. 
I'm going to pull that knot. Okay. And again, here I would turn this over and add some hypo cement right here. Okay. But since I couldn't get my glue open, we're just going to pretend like I did. <laughs> All right. Threading up a bead right up against that knot that we just made. Same thing up through the loop. Okay. And now underneath and down through. Okay. Very last bead. Going across the top, up through the bottom. Okay. Underneath and down through the top. All right, so now we have finished the knotting section of our necklace. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna take everything off. And undo down here. Okay, so let me grab my ruler so I can tell you how much, how long the center piece is. So our centerpiece is gonna be right at about 10 and a half inches long, okay? So you've got 10 and a half inches of bead work, okay? So you could have shortened this up a little bit for, you know, taking this part out and you would have had just a really cool bracelet without the dangle. A lot of things you could do here. Okay, so since we only have 10 inches, 10 and a half inches, we're gonna have to make up the difference with some other stringing material, or you've got plenty of this leather left. You could go all the way around, you know, pull it on around to make a loop, and then tie on a jump ring and a clasp of some sort, and then attach it here if you wanted to. But we are, not going to do that or at least I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you something different. This is not really um I mean, it's not super hard or anything. I'm going to take my cord and look and see how big that loop is. I want to make a loop over here too. All I'm going to do is just tie an overhanded knot because really once you've got this on nobody's going to really notice this part. They're going to be so busy looking at the beads. <laughs> They're not really going to notice your loops being not exactly the same kind of loop, okay? So, again, you can finish this off however you want to. We're going to add some chain just because that's easy, but you can definitely utilize the rest of your cord. Okay, see, I want those, those loops to be pretty, pretty close to the same size. They're not exact, but it's pretty close, okay? Just have one going one way and one going the other way. Now... I definitely, again, would add some hypo cement here, okay? And then after the hypo cement dries, I would go ahead and trim this off. Now, I'm gonna trim it off now, but I'm not gonna trim it right up next to it because I haven't added my glue yet. So I am gonna leave these two little dangle guys here. After I add some glue and I come back later, I will trim this off as close to the knot as I possibly can, but I do wanna make sure that my glue dries before I do that, okay? So now you've got two loops on either end. You can add whatever kind of stringing material you want to to finish this off. I went ahead and just got some chain because that's easy. Um, and I also have my little beetle on variety pack. You can also get these on the Jesse James Speeds website as well. This guy has jump rings and lobster clasps and spring clasps. It's got everything you need in it. So I'm going to grab two. Let's see here. I'm going to need more than two, but I'm going to grab some of these jump rings and just sit these over here and a lobster clasp because that's what we're going to use. All right, so I'm going to take a jump ring, and this part is really, like I said, this is up to you as to how you want to finish this off. I'm going to thread a jump ring onto here, and then I've cut a five-inch section of chain. I'm just going to thread that on to my jump ring and then close my jump ring back. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just another section. 
You could also put the cord along the bead on the other side of the knot. You absolutely could. Yes, 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 you absolutely could. That's what's so cool about this is that there's so many different ways that you can, you can mess with your knots. I mean, it's really just up to you. I mean, if you, if you start playing around with it, you think of all these extra things that you could do. And I love that. That's fun. You know, that's what makes jewelry making so much fun is all of the different things that you can do. All right. So again, at the end, nothing fancy, just a jump ring and a lobster clasp. Now, like I said, you could you could get fancy with this if you wanted to. You could use something other than chain. You could use fairy silk if you wanted to. You could use um, fabric chain. That would look really cool with it too. Or more leather, it's up to you. I just wanted to use up some of this chain. I like chain, especially in the summertime, especially lightweight. All right, so that's it. You've got your necklace ready to go. The length portion is not nearly as important. It's gonna be behind your neck or under your hair or whatever. The most important part of this is all of this beadwork that you've done and your beautiful Dakota Stones beads and everything else that you've got going on. Just, you know, it's just a really cool, cool, fun piece. All right, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll have a little chat. <laughs> Hi! All right, let me move this guy. So many lights in here and yet it is still so dark and I end up with this crazy glare. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna hold this guy up so you can see it. All hanging and pretty, isn't that cool? This was a fun project. I love it when I get to make knots, when I get to play with cord. And if you love cord, go on over to the Jesse James Beads website because the cord and these awesome Dakota Stone Speeds are buy two, get one free. Definitely take advantage of that. That's going on until 11 tonight, Eastern time. Um, and then the sales are gonna switch to something else. I, just good stuff, nothing but good things, all good things going on with Jesse James Beads all week long. So definitely check back. You guys sign up for the email so that you can get the alerts. Check the Facebook page so that you can get the alerts for what goes on sale next. And um, yeah, so <laughs> that's it for me. The M&Ms are starting to wear off. I need to go have real food. So that's what I'm going to go do. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. I will be with you again here on the Jesse James Beads Facebook page on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. I will have another fun project and there will still be sales going on so definitely take advantage of those and you guys have a great night thank you all for watching so many people watching tonight i thank you stephanie <laughs> i'm like waving like you can see me <laughs> you guys have a great night and i will see you guys again soon bye guys